today we're going to be talking about preparing to become a successful PT and uh, of the future and how you can do this and how you can take actionable steps to do this. Um, I have a guest on here today by the name of Greg Todd that I know that all of you can benefit a ton from hearing. And so I'm going to attempt to introduce this guy. Uh, he really is a guy who needs no introduction. However, as far as what he is involved in, um, he is a man that wears many hats. So he is a clinic owner of two physical therapy clinics that are doing quite well. Um, he's an entrepreneur. He is a consultant for many businesses, as well as he runs online courses. He's looking down, trying to be humble. I love it. And he is as personal hat that he wears. He is a man with a family, four kids. Uh, he loves sports. He loves drones. And he is a man of faith. And it is my privilege to welcome you onto this live broadcast, Greg Todd. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I do love my kids. I love my wife. And I love my drone. I love my drone. Yeah. <laughs> it's good that you love all of those things. Yes, um, yes. So just let me, let me introduce how, how I got to know you. Uh, Greg is somebody that I got to know online through uh, following his stuff that he has been putting out. He's been putting out some very valuable content that really resonated with me. Um, and through that, he has become a mentor of mine um, and a friend. And I also ended up taking his course. And I've, so I've learned so much from this guy. So uh, this is a guy that I feel like has a lot of value that he can add um, to a lot of physical therapists. Really, anybody who interacts with the guy gets something from him. But I thought it'd be an awesome guy to have on. So Let's get this thing going. GT. Um, let's lead in with a little bit of MBA because let's be real. It's on everybody's mind right now. Um, I got to get your thoughts. How has this MBA playoffs influenced or not influenced LeBron James's legacy? And feel free to chime in on the MJ comparison slash conversation if you will. Um. I don't believe it's tainted his legacy at all. I mean, look, MJ, MJ has went 6-0. and Once you have lost in a finals, like, there is no comparison when it comes to that, okay? So, like, that's just something that hasn't been done. So once LeBron right. lost that first time True. with Cleveland back when they played the Spurs and they got swept – like, we can't even compare him to MJ from that standpoint. Now, is LeBron still an amazing player? Of course, he's amazing. Is LeBron probably going to go down as one of the best players of all time? Of course. The dude just averaged a triple-double uh, in the finals. I mean, that's never been done. But the comparison to Jordan, once you've lost in the NBA finals, there is no comparison. Done. Hmm. Done. Interesting. I value your opinion because you have had the opportunity to see them both play. That is not an old joke. It's just the truth. It's just the truth, bro. It's the truth. You know, um, I, here, wait, I got to tell you this. I have to tell you this. So, so in 2000 and what, 13 or 14, when the Heat, when the Miami Heat uh, beat the Indiana Pacers to play the Spurs, it was a rematch of the Spurs in the right. finals. right. right. I, and, and look, man, I don't know if you want to call me a NBA prophet or whatever, but I <laughs> sat next to my wife and I said, I said, sweetie, we got to go to Miami to the NBA finals. She's like, yes, 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 yes. Awesome. Okay. I was like, she's like, w like, why did you choose now? I'm like, because LeBron's leaving. Andrew, mm. I knew, I knew from then that it was over. I knew that that guy, like that guy actually, look, I don't care if people are LeBron haters, whatever. I'm not a LeBron hater. Mm -hmm. The guy has a great heart. And I, I, I truly believe that he always wanted to go back. He wanted to learn how to win so he can go back to his city and do it for them. And I think that's what he got from Miami. Um, and he went back and he did it. And I just think he's amazing. I think he's totally amazing. Uh, I've seen MJ play. MJ has a style that was just so awesome. Like everything he did just looked cool. You know what I mean? The way he chewed gum True. looked cool. He walked cool. <laughs> just, just everything about him was super cool. Uh, and chewed gum cool. Yeah, he's just he, yeah, he's just he was just a cool dude, man. So yeah, just they're both amazing players in their own right. You gotta have you know what? I love greatness, man. I love to watch greatness in anything. And so 
so yeah, so I got mad love for LeBron, got mad love for MJ, but MJ's six and oh, LeBron's three and five. It's no comparison. You know, I respect the opinion. Personally, I could talk about this all day. Maybe we should have a separate live stream just about this okay. discussion. Okay. Which I, <laughs> yeah. I think LeBron's got it in him. That may be the millennial in me speaking loudly. However, we will see. It's, it's a big TBD for me at this point. Because this series right. I thought was going to tell a lot. But right. we will see. I mean, I, now, yeah. Now, yeah. now, I mean, I'll say this. Yeah. Let's talk about this. The, like the greatest NBA Finals performances. Like, la like last year... That was mm. probably the and, like, and, look, and look, I'm a I'm a Miami guy. What D Wade did right. in 2006 was ridiculous. Okay, mm -hmm. but what LeBron did last year was legendary. So you know we look we go through this all day, but at the end of the day, MJ is still six and zero. So we gotta respect him there. What LeBron did this year is amazing, but it's always tainted when you lose. True. So it is True. what it is. It is what it is. Respect. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to somehow transition out of that, that needed discussion that we had to have. Okay. Um, so a lot of those players, they combine skill with effort and hard work. Right. So this is my segue, super smooth like Katie's jump shot. What can those that are in DPT school right now do uh, so they can hit the ground running as a PT? I, I, think, I think, you know, let's talk about what KD and what LeBron have done and and you just said it like they work hard they have honed their craft they have honed their skills right and 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 it's paid off for them right like they produced amazing fruit they're both now champions uh they're both amazing players and all that other stuff okay so now as a pt student i mean it it, it goes without saying you need to work hard you need to grind you also need to value yourself as more than just a PT that can treat patients day in and day out. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, the first thing I tell you is you have to build up yourself. You have to become more attractive in the form of, hey, I want to follow that person. I want to work with that person. Hey, I don't mind talking to that person. Like You just have to become a much more approachable uh, engaging personality so that opportunities can open themselves up to you. I think every single DPT student can do that, at least do that. So if you decide, hey, man, I want to work in a SNF. Okay, I want to work in an outpatient setting. I want to work acute. Okay, that's fine. But at the end of the day, you're only going to get promoted if you are likable, if you are great at leadership, if you are... Um, you know, like you just attract people. People want to do what you say. So every single DPT student, because you're in the people business, you're in the service industry, just in healthcare, like you can level yourself up just by being better. Like be the best version of Andrew Moran as you can become, right? I mean, right. And I'm, I'm not asking you to be me. I'm just asking you to be the best version of you. So I think that's the first thing that everyone could do. I think the second thing is understand that, okay, there is competition out there in the fact that you're all DPTs. Right. Okay. You're all DPTs. So, so that's cool. But what else can you do? Like what else can you bring mm -hmm. to the table? Can you help us get patients? Okay. Cool. Can you help us uh, create programs to, enhance and prolong the patient journey okay that's cool too hey most pts hate business can you talk about business can you do business in the business because most places are super nervous to talk to pts about business because then pts will get like oh I, no i don't want to deal with that oh it's all about the money like you know what i mean so what do you bring to the table that makes you more than just a dpt that can treat patients those are the two things that Definitely. you can do today. Work on yourself and try to become more than just your traditional DPT. Definitely. I agree. Um, I think that's something that's so easy to fall into the mindset of. I'll start putting those things into practice once I get the diploma. You know, And that's really, I agree, that's something you can start working on right now. Bro, I got to tell you this. My kids, and, and trust me, I'm not like, like 
you know, over them, like, hey, you need to do this. But, like, they get <laughs> Like they understand, like there's certain things that you can do today that's going to help you today, right? They have YouTube right. channels. They are like, you, my, my son is making money. He's 11 years old. He's making money from doing intros for people, right? I mean, right. look, it's, does he want to be a PT? No, my, my oldest daughter does, but my 11 year old doesn't <laughs> want to be, he wants to be an accountant. Cool. Okay. But he understands that like he has to embrace technology. Like he understands that he can play, he can play on YouTube, he can play his Xbox games and all the other stuff, but he also understands that this is the way that he communicates with his friends. So these are learn how to leverage myself so that when that time comes for me to actually do something with it and do well for myself, then I can do it. Right. So like right. I don't ever want to hear that thing about when you get your diploma, all of a sudden you're gonna turn it on. That is the biggest load of crap right. you could ever hear that is not true you have to start from now you got to start doing that so you look right. you're going to always have problems you're going to always have problems when you have your diploma you start your first job you're trying to do an eval and not get run out the room you know what i mean right okay you got to have your own right. set of problems. so work on these other things from now so it will elevate you the minute you get your diploma love it Awesome. And that kind of leads into my next question, which is the issue of leadership. And I know you touched on it a little bit. Um, how, how can we as PTs um, adopt what we know as the servant leadership mindset? Um, Cause I know it can be hard not to, not to just grab what we see for us, you know, and especially when you get into uh, the finances and salary negotiations and stuff like that. So how, I guess, how important is it to have that servant leadership mindset uh, maybe you can speak on your personal experiences with that. I you look. I think I think this is this is the elephant in the room with physical therapy. Um, I believe the first thing is in order for you to have that servant leadership mindset, you have to have a mindset of abundance and not scarcity, right? So if so, if you're working in a setting and everyone has this scarcity mindset, everyone's like, okay, well. The only way I'm going to get to the top is if I push people down, right? right. Um, yeah. I don't believe that. I mean, I don't believe that. I think that's probably the reason why our group is so powerful, right? Because everybody's trying yeah. to level everyone else up. It's like, hey, what can I do for you, Andrew? Instead of, hey, Andrew, what can you do for me? And then everyone's Definitely. doing it for each other. So it's like everybody's just catapulted. Um, I think a big thing that PTs need to understand is – in order for you to have servant leadership, you can't have that if you have a scarcity mindset. It's impossible. It's mm -hmm. impossible. You can't, like, my, like for me, my job is just to serve people. So, I mean, do you consider me a leader? Right? You consider me a leader. Okay. But the truth is, is that I just serve. I mean, <laughs> that's all I do. I serve. I make sure everyone else eats. And then you guys just make sure that I never go unfed. That's servant right. leadership, Right. I mean, that's what it is. So you can't have it unless you have a mindset of abundance, unless you believe yeah. that there is so much out there for all of us that we can never, ever, ever have enough. So why not use each other to help us get to where we all need to go? Definitely. That, that's how I handle my business. That's how I handle my clinics. That's how I handle my students. Um, that's how I handle my family. Uh, but it's a mindset of abundance. So if you have, if you don't have that, it's very hard to even learn how to lead. It's 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 just very difficult to lead uh, in a way that you're serving others, and then they will always respect you. So. Right, and I think that's so valuable for PTs to hear that from you know someone who has the credibility who's been working for a PT for 16 years or so. Correct. Um, yeah, I think we need to hear that from from someone who's credible. Um, and I guess, yeah, that kind of also gets into my next question, which is um, this idea of what, what exactly is possible for PTs in the year of 2017 and beyond? Um, I feel like sometimes we look at PT through this filter, and you talked a little bit even in the first question of starting to make ourselves more well-rounded. But what can we be doing in 2017 that maybe we couldn't do five or ten or more years ago? Uh Oh my gosh. We have how much time? <laughs> how much time do we have? Okay. All right. Okay. So I think there's a couple of things. All right. So when I started school, all I knew at the time is, okay, you can be a staff PT 
And if you want to elevate yourself, you're going to elevate yourself into management. Uh, that's it. Okay. All right. So, so here's what you can do today. All right. You can be a staff PT. That's cool. You can't elevate right. yourself into management. It's never been easier to have your own business. I'm talking a traditional four wall business. Why? Because the little man can finally win. You have social media. <laughs> okay. You have social media where you can basically get yourself. You can get your message out there um, to anyone. I mean, for a price that like I could never afford to have my clinic in a TV advertisement on CBS right. or ABC, but right. I could spend $200 and I can be in front of 70,000 people in Tampa Bay on Facebook where everybody's right. Right. attention's at. Okay. All right. So the little guy can win. So you can have your own cash practice. You could have an insurance practice. It doesn't matter. You can have any of them. Okay. Here's more. You can be a consultant. I'm a consultant for 18 companies. Here's why I'm a consultant. Am I a consultant because I'm 16 years out? Absolutely not. It's because at, I had a point in my PT career where the trigger went on. It was because of health reasons that I realized that my worth as just a practicing clinician was going away because physically I couldn't do it. So I learned other things. I learned how to bill. I learned how to collect money through insurances. I learned how to market. I learned how to blog. I learned how to build a WordPress website. I learned how to make money as affiliates. I learned how to lead. I learned how to create systems. I learned how to teach. I learned how to explain conditions so that my staff could basically duplicate the things that I was saying. I learned how to use technology to be able to communicate with my patients. That has allowed me to be a consultant for 18 companies. I've just learned more than everybody else. That's it. So the possibilities are endless. Now, here's the beauty. Here is where everybody can smile. You guys can smile right now. You can smile right now because you actually picked physical therapy. You picked physical therapy. Physical therapy is like the jackpot, y'all. Nobody wants to have surgery. Nobody wants to be doped up on freaking Percocets all day. Nobody wants to feel like junk. They want their back to stop hurting them. They want their neck to start hurting them. They want their shoulders to stop hurting them. They want those things and they want to do it in the most conservative, economical manner possible. Ding, 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 ding. PT for the win, people. The problem is, is that most physical therapists don't know how to promote that stuff. They don't know how to promote it in a way that talks to the customer, to the patient, to the consumer in a way that they understand. It's never been easier. It's never been easier to win in PT. There's more. There's more. Can I keep on going? You can create. <laughs> look, look, dude, check this out. Last night, right? Last night, I had a live stream on mm -hmm. YouTube, okay? I had a live stream on YouTube. Like, my dream was always to be a professor, okay? I had a live stream on YouTube where I went for an hour and 39 minutes talking on a subject, and I had 86 people start the live stream with me. And after one hour and 39 minutes, I had 85 that were still on at like close to 11 o'clock at night, okay? So I'm in my pajamas, okay? I'm in my pajamas. I'm wearing an SSP t-shirt, and I'm in my pajamas, and people are <laughs> listening to me. You can give courses. You can offer online services. You can use the skills and the knowledge that you have as a PT to help people with problems. Love it. Yeah, I'm um, a pro. So we talked about what's possible. Yeah. Um, and then, honestly, GT, it's like I, I purposely, guys, I did not give him my questions because I like him off the cuff. But he led into this next one, too, with systems. Um, so we know systems play an integral part uh, with a business. So you can kind of insert person into system and achieve the same results. So how can we be adapting that mindset um, as students? What systems can we be, or how can we get in that systems mindset as students per se? Okay, so let, let's, let's actually go back with this because one of the biggest things I thought when you would say systems to me, mm -hmm. like 10 years ago, I'd say, oh, they're trying to talk cookie cutter. They're about that cookie cutter action. No, 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 I'm unique. I'm Greg Todd. I am who I am. 
I right. want to no, know, no. You know what? Systems is the reason why physical therapy hasn't taken off to the next level. The mm. lack of systems is the reason why. So let, so let me explain here. Let me explain this. When you go into a doctor's office, Andrew, okay, you go into a doctor's office, what usually happens? Like when you're in the waiting room, right? You, okay, you're in the waiting room. You're going to your doc's office. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you got a cold. You got some sniffles, you know, whatever. Right. Does the doctor come out and get you? No, sir. No, no, doesn't come out and get you. Okay, <laughs> all right. So if you went to another doctor, if you went to another doctor, another doctor's office down the road, would the doctor come out and get you? If you're in a way. Why not? Okay, so here's the deal. The deal is, is that because of the lack of systems in physical therapy, there is no true identity to physical therapy. One person goes to this physical therapist, they do it this way. One person goes over here, the physical therapist gets them. One person goes over here, the front desk person brings it back. One person goes over here, they do this, they do that. There's no identity to it. Right. The reason why people come to my place over and over and over again is because they know they're going to get the same experience every single time. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay. Yes, so absolutely. believe it or not, people love systems. Now, what's cool is that I'm different than you. You have a different personality than me. We both love basketball, but I'm sure we have some differences. Okay. Sure. So, so we have, so that's what people buy into. They love the difference in our personality. Okay. We have a few different things in our skill set, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's great. But at the end of the day, what most practice owners are looking for is they're looking for something that can be duplicated. So you, okay. as a new grad, as a new grad, if you have a system that can help the practice owner with running their operations a little bit cleaner, they're all game for it. If you have a system that can help them with more patients, they're game for it. If you have a system that could allow their patient experience to be amazing but consistent every single time, they're game for it. If you have a system that allows the patient to be able to be funneled into another service after they finish formal physical therapy, they're game for it. Practice right. owners are all about the systems if you have them. And if you guys could bring systems to them and show them how it can be implemented and help them execute that out, your worth has just skyrocketed. So let me just get this clear. What you're saying to me is that if I go out and I get the fanciest certification and the most alphabet soup after my name, there could be other things beyond that that I should be looking into in an interview setting? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and look, here's the deal. I mean, I fell for it too. Right. I got my OCS. I got my CSCS. I thought that the more letters meant more paper. I thought the more letters meant more prestige. But the truth is, is that it only means more prestige within our ecosystem of physical therapists. Definitely. But physical therapists aren't paying my bills. Physical therapists aren't um, taking care of my kids' education. Okay. It's patients. It is the company that I work for or that I own. That's how it works. So I think a big thing is that we tend to talk amongst ourselves as PTs. Mm -hmm. And I think I fell into that trap as well. Like, oh my gosh, if I get my OCS, maybe that would allow me to be able to create, you know, awesome CEU courses for tennis or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, whatever. But I mean, if you really want to be of worth, you have systems. You know, I mean, that's really why most of these companies want me. They want me because I have good systems and I can sure. tell them my systems and you can put my systems into play and you do it yourself. Right. So. Awesome. All right. Next we have, I did a, a poll with my, actually my class, and I kind of wanted to get a feel for what current PT students are feeling maybe anxious or worried about in their future careers or even currently as PT students. Um, and the two top things, this may or may not be a surprise, um, but most students are worried about the debt they're bringing on. Um, so what can we be doing as students or new grads or even maybe a, a practice or a, a PT who's been in the field for a while who's looking to change? What can we be doing to help combat that um, excessive student loan that we're now having to take on? Okay. Let's hit something here. Debt. Let's talk about this debt. I want you to stop thinking of it as debt and I want you to think of it as an investment. Mm. Okay. Okay. So let's just say this, if you buy a house, right? 
let's say a house is $150,000. We all look at that as like, we don't mind getting into that debt, right? Right. Because we look at the house as an asset, right? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Oh, here, let's here. Let's get into this a little bit more. Okay. Let's go. What happens if you, you, okay, you get into the house, you just bought a house. Okay. Awesome. And you decide you, you and your wife decide, you know what? We need to upgrade our countertops. If you upgrade the countertops in the house, what does that do to the house, Andrew? Does the value it may, go up? It'll increase it. Yeah. It increases the value, right? Okay. You guys are the asset. You have used physical therapy school. It's an investment. And you are the asset. Like you, like, like that's the way it works. You are the asset. Now you have to decide me being a basic physical therapist. Is that asset me going to make a return on my investment PT school? Is it yes or no? I don't know. You have to answer that question for yourself. But right. if you upgrade the countertops, if you turn the, the, the floors into wood floors instead of tile, you know, if you add a pool, <laughs> right? If you paint <laughs> right. the house, right. if you upgrade the house, if you paint it, you do all those things. Well, now you increase the value, the worth of the house. So the question is, let's not look at it as debt. It's an investment. Now, are you going to get a return on your investment? Yes or no? The way you right. are today. Are you going to get that return? Probably not. So now it's time for you to upgrade the countertops. Yep, exactly. SSBT. Okay, you know what I mean? Okay, all right. Now, now, now it's time for you to maybe put a pool in. Maybe it's time for you to, you know, maybe do some new landscaping. You guys have to try to make yourself the asset better so you can get a return on your investment as quickly as possible. Sure. There you go. Love it. And I, I'm seeing some comments here. I did want to bring these, bring these up. Um, about, we kind of talked about the alphabet soup a little bit. Um, and I'll just, I'll, I think I can show this comment here. Let's see. Yeah. So talking about getting certifications and I think, I think we can all agree that yes, like having that clinical development is definitely going to help carry you in your PT career. Right. Um, but in, I think what you were saying, Greg, is it may or may not translate into actual dollars and cents. Right. I it, mean, maybe it gives you a, maybe a niche market, which right. may carry you in your PT career, but. I, I just think that, okay, like Garrett said, true, but if it helps you develop, you know, clinically, you gotta go for it, right? Of course, mm -hmm. like you have to, that's part of it. That's a, that's a gimme. You have to do hours. Y'all, here's the deal. I did 180 CEU hours within my first 18 months of being a PT. So I'm not discrediting it, okay? I'm right. not discrediting it at all. But what I'm trying to tell you is that that's a given. What we aren't doing is we aren't working on ourselves. What sure. we there, there's there's a cap, Garrett. There's a cap to what you can get as a clinical PT. When you go and you get your OCS, there is not a new reimbursement rate that you get from Aetna and Cigna. If there was, we'd be having a different story here. That's not how it works. If you go and you get your MTC or you get your you get Ola Grimsby certified or whatever. There is not increased reimbursement rates from the insurance. 90% of physical therapists are working with insurances. Right. So there is a cap. Now, do you want to be good clinically? Of course you do. Absolutely. But there's other things that you need to be good at. I can tell you one of them. It's taking the knowledge that you already have and learning how to package it and present it to people so that they actually understand why they're doing physical therapy. Right. That's kind of the, yeah, the delivery. And, and I think some of those things you may or may not get in school, which I, I think you had to learn by being in practice, correct? Kind of learn from to, some mistakes and from I, other people. I had to learn by being in practice, but I also had to learn by, um, by what patients told me. Hmm. I'm going to give you guys a quick story. If you don't mind, I'll give you a quick story. Sure. Yeah. So I'm working with this guy, right? This is maybe about six, seven years ago. I'm working with this guy, see him for his first visit. I'm doing an evaluation on him. Um, I said, hey, let's, he's, he's coming in for his back, right? And, um, you know, the, 
the dude was like, okay, all right, I'll come back. But he wasn't really convinced with what I was telling him. And sure. I went right into treatment. I didn't really explain a lot and all the other stuff. Just went right into treatment because he was in a lot of pain. So my, my mind said, treat him, help him, help him, treat, mm -hmm. you know, treat him, right? Okay. All right. So don't get any better. I'm like, bro, it's your second time here. Like, you know, just give it a little time. All right. Treatment went okay. Uh, I think I'm feeling a little better, whatever. Okay. All right. Next time he comes back, he says, hey, today's going to be my last day. I said, why? He goes, well, I saw a chiropractor and he kind of outlined a treatment for me. It's going to cost me $3,000. $3,000. I was like, what wow. did you do? He's like, I signed up for it. <laughs> he was like, see ya. I was like, okay. Oh, my God. I was like, what the hell did I do? You know what that chiropractor did? He told me what he did. He gave him a plan. Hmm. He gave him a package. He packaged what he was, whether it was right or wrong, or I had the better treatment or not, it didn't matter. This guy packaged it better than I did. That was my turning point. I said, what the hell is going on here? I have all these certifications, I have all this stuff, but I don't know how to package what I'm doing. Sure. And that's where I think most therapists struggle. We're great mechanically, like, but we're not very good with our delivery. Hmm. And that's a huge part. So if you don't get the they're not coming, they're not coming. Right. They're not, I mean, it's, this is a time industry. Like we need time to be able to help you get better. And if we don't have it, we're not going to help you. I don't care what you do. Right. So. That long-term mindset. Yeah, exactly. 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 So, all right. So this is my last question. So another, another part of this, this survey that I went with my class, the other answer was burnout um, and how people are afraid that they're going to get burnt out or whether that's a setting thing or just the field of physical therapy or their job ends up being something that uh, a, a workplace that they didn't think it was going to be. Um, could you speak a little bit on burnout and possible ways you can prevent it before it may start? Okay, so man, this is a great question. Um, I think there's a couple things. I think number one is, I think burnout happens for many different reasons. I think one is you can be in a toxic environment. Mm. You know, you can be in a, a um, an environment where people aren't elevating you, uh, and they are pulling you down. I think that's one. That's one thing. Right. So imagine now, just think about it for a second. You're at your job eight to ten hours a day, and if you're in an environment, remember now the cover charge to do physical therapy. For patients is they got to be broken okay right, right. all yep. right okay all right so that's the cover charge but remember y'all signed up for it okay i know i signed up for it but you did too so <laughs> imagine if you're in an environment that's not a high energy environment imagine if you're in an environment where your co-workers aren't trying you're 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 in a place where uh like people just aren't motivating well, I got to be honest with you, burnout's going to happen a hell of a lot quicker because you don't have a tribe of people that are pushing you forward. I mean, mm -hmm. and, you, and you know this, Andrew, you know this yeah. in SSPT Nation, like you take people, they haven't even gone through the course yet. We haven't started season four yet and they're already fired up. It's because, because you're in a group of people where it's like everyone, it, look, people have problems. We have issues at work. We have different things going on, but we're with people that are, that you can bounce ideas off. They can help encourage you when you need to be encouraged. I think that's the first thing with burnout. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing is this. I think the second thing is everyone wants to be in a situation where they can win. Definitely. And yeah. the minute I don't believe PTs are lazy. I just don't believe it. I don't believe they're lazy. PTs aren't lazy to get through PT school is pretty freaking tough. To, to be very honest with you, I have two clinics of 24 employees. I have created this online academy and have gotten it to over 200 total students in less than 15 months. Still to this day, I think PT school is the hardest thing I've ever done. Okay. I think that should be encouragement for those still in school okay. right now. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I'm, I, mean I mean, I still yeah. think today PT school was the hardest thing I've ever done. Now, right. with that said, when you come out of PT school, and you have your debt in your investment, mm -hmm. you wanna be put in a situation where you can win. So Definitely. if you're working in an environment 
where all you're doing is treating patient after patient after patient after patient. You don't feel like you're getting your worth. You feel like that's all you're valued at. You feel like there's no way for you to level up. It's very hard to get more money as just a practicing Right. That over time we will get rewarded more. Why? Why? If reimbursement is going down, that means that things are only going to get worse. So that's what happens when you have a therapist, a one-year therapist that's in the clinic and they're like there till 7.30 at night and they're doing notes and they're just freaking run ragged and they're like, crap, there's no end in sight. Okay, well, that leads to burnout, man. So, right. so that's why you have to protect yourself. You have to put yourself in situations where you can win. Definitely. Every single person can put themselves – you do that well you could change jobs but a lot of you can't do that right away okay but you could create an online business you could start building out a platform you could start doing other things to elevate yourself you could start marketing and branding yourself online there are many things that you could do today that will put you in a situation to where you're like damn i could win You have zest. You're like, yo, man, I can make this. Okay. I don't know if you've ever been in a football, uh, NFL locker room. I, I have. Okay. I have. When, when you have lost, when the team has lost, they're. When they win, they don't complain. Right. You see what I'm saying? When, yeah. be, like before the game, they're not complaining. When they win, they don't complain. But when they lose, oh, this is hurting. Oh, mm -hmm. my back. Oh, this is happening. Because that's just the way that it is. If you are in a winning situation or a situation where you can at least have the chance to win, that's the reason why we love the first day of NBA season, man. Because there's hope, man. There's yeah. hope. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? But once that hope is gone, you're burned out. That's it. I don't know how else to say it. You're burned out. Definitely. Well, Greg, that's all the questions I had for you. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. Um, I wanted to also give you the opportunity to let or to tell people where they can get in touch with you. And I can put some links in the description after this, after this is over. Awesome. So uh, Greg Todd, physical therapy builder, facebook.com slash the PT builder. Every other platform is Greg Todd PT. Uh, I probably spend the majority of my time on YouTube because my passion is to help to change the trajectory of physical therapy. So I love to talk to people that are considering the field of physical therapy, and I'm trying to train them from now on what you need to do in order to win in the field today. So you need to mentorwithgreg.com. Uh, and that will allow you to be in my free online mentorship group. And then I have a course called Smart Success PT. We actually have it currently open to the public until the end of this week or when we sell out, which looks like it's going to happen pretty darn soon. So uh, smartsuccesspt.com. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, and if any of you guys have any questions about anything we talked about, anything we didn't talk about that maybe you wish we did, I'm sure Greg would be more than willing to talk to you. Um, if you wanted to talk to me, I'll put my information on there as well. I'll also throw a link on to the course uh, that Greg was talking about, if that's something that you're interested in, in purchasing or looking into more. Um, yeah, so Greg, thanks again. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for putting up with a little delay and the technical difficulties. I think hopefully some people got some good information from this. And uh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, love to have you on. So. And listen, if anybody needs to um, reach out to me, the best way to do it is by sending me a Facebook message and I will voice message you back. It's the quickest, fastest way. I don't like to type emails, y'all. Come on, man. I got things to do. Okay, I get you. So, I get you. All right. Cool. All right. Cool. Man. All right. Have a good night, Greg. All right. Thank Thanks you, for guys. Watching, guys. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.